Welcome to the greenhouse. We got a nice bright sunny day out here. It was about 22 degrees, uh, 20, 22 degrees Fahrenheit overnight and we kept about 44 degrees Fahrenheit in the greenhouse overnight with our compost and our geothermal and passive solar systems that we're always experimenting with. Today we are talking about 100 watt solar panels. These can be had for about 60 to $100 depending on manufacturer and availability and where you're shopping at. I paid about $69 for this one online and we've got a solar controller with it and all the goodies all the wiring to hook it up I mean the wiring is a little bulky so it's hard to attach it to some of the actual connections in your controller so there's always a little modifying and proper steps to take when you're setting up a solar system because it is electricity but it is simple solar and it's like 12 volt like your car if you think about it like that it's very simple for beginners and it's safe you're not going to electrocute this one 100 watt solar panel can produce about seven to eight hundred watts a day if you got eight hours of sunlight in winter time so that's about twenty four thousand watts in one month or about 24 kilowatts in one month there is 1,000 watts per kilowatt and in the summertime we are getting about 13 to 14 hours of sunlight per day that sun feels really good today speaking of the sunlight so that's about 1350 to 1400 watts per day that you're creating with just one 100 watt solar panel so taking that 1350 watts per day and multiplying it by 30 30 days in a month on average we're going Going to get about 40,500 watts or 40.5 kilowatts produced per month by a solar panel in the summertime. So with an average of 18 cents per kilowatt on an average, I just looked that up and that was the average that it gave me of 18 cents per kilowatt that everybody's paying across the country. It might be higher, it might be lower. So depending on how much one kilowatt costs in your area, you can hear the airplanes flying today because it's nice and sunny. We haven't seen the sun in about a week. It's been heavy rain, snow, and wintry mixture crap. It's just been cold and miserable. So seeing the sun is great and being able to use the sun is even better. To jump back on topic, that 40.5 kilowatts per month times 18 cents a month is going to give you a cost of about $87. And that doesn't count all the money we're saving to heat the greenhouse in the long run. So all of these systems are powering systems to passively heat this greenhouse overnight. Now if all that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel because that's pretty much all all we do and we've got our new solar panel we've got our electric panels over here for the southern end so we've got electricity on both sides solar power only down here and we've got one GFI outlet with two outlets on it and one 100 watt solar panel operating this controller down here so we've got a whole bunch of power powering this greenhouse we actually have a total of four to five hundred watts powering our greenhouse now and that is pretty darn cool to be able to say we've got 500 watts and in a matter of two hours we're making one kilowatt of power with 500 watts so let's run through some simple basics here you've got one watt you've got 100 watts and then you've got 1000 watts 1000 watts is where they start measuring it as opposed to 100 watts you just say 100 watts so simply taking into account usage potential on the systems you're going to be using whether you're going to have a high draw or a rather low draw on small systems like fans and stuff or a high draw on water pumps or large fans and stuff like that so one of our little 12 volt fans that we use all over the greenhouse to move geothermal and stove heat and compost heat those draw about 3.5 watts per hour is what they're rated at so 100 watt panel is going to power many of those now mind you on a cloudy day it's not going to be able to power them as much because you're not receiving 100 full watts so you're not going to be able to compound all of those little fans together so let's say we got our four fans down there drawing 3.5 watts each drawing about 14 watts as a hourly draw from all of those fans so let's now say that they run on a timer for eight hours throughout the day and that is going to lead you to about 112 watts used throughout the day to move all of that air around and cycle it now mind you that one solar panel is going to create between seven and eight hundred watts so on a very very cloudy day you're going to be able to power those four fans requiring only 14 watts per hour so that's how you see all of our fans just pulsing that air down into the ground blowing it back up or through our compost or 
off of our stove. So all of those are slowly pulsing and using what little energy comes through the clouds. Now I just want to explain water pumps for example. We have a 350 liter per hour, a 600 liter per hour, and an 800 liter per hour. Now if you're trying to find your consumption and your usages on those and you know one or the other, if you know your volts and your amps or you don't know your watts, so you're going to go volts times amps are going to give you the wattage used. So on our 350 liter, we've got 12 volts times 1.5 amp draw is going to give you about 18 watts drawn from that pump per hour. The 600 liter per hour pump has a 1.7 amp draw and then we multiply that by 12 volts giving us 20.4 watts of draw per hour. Now the 800 liter per hour pump is going to have a 1.9 amp draw times 12 volts giving you about 22.8 watts per hour. So figuring out the correct size and the correct draw and how much you're really going to need on those cloudy days when you're just using it for systems like this in the greenhouse just trying to suffice. If you're using it for your house you're going to build a couple panels together obviously so you really don't have to worry about overusing the system. I also state that because I stated how fast these pay for themselves when you're actually using it to save yourself money on a system like this for heating purposes. One last thing I want to state is using the correct wire wiring is very important. The electrons have to flow. Those copper have to be able to exchange electrons through them at a free flow. That's when you have fire hazards is if you're not using the right size of wire for a heavy amperage or a heavy draw. So you're going to be flowing more electrons and they're going to be trying to flow more than they're allowed. That just means you can bottleneck your electrons that are flowing through the copper or they're not able to flow through the copper fast enough. So using correct wire and mainly that is in place on your batteries. So your battery wirings, I got these hooked up here, your battery wires are very thick there. So our positive and negative from our solar panel are very thick and our positive and negative to our battery are very thick but to all of our systems it doesn't have to be very large. I have various sizes going all the way down to 14 gauge on some of our fans down there because that's what they came with right out of the box. Computer fans, just waterproof, dustproof, and heat proof fans. So as long as you use common sense with it you really won't have any issues with starting a fire or anything like that. So first of all I've got another one of these. I got a ton of these. These things come with the kit and they come with the solar panels so I'm trying to build myself a nice array here so I've got a few of these this little eco worthy solar controller a hundred watt 24 volt i believe or 12 volt so you can use this for a larger battery system or a 24 volt system if you need to possibly on a boat or a large truck or something like that and then i have another one here so like i said i have a couple of them but these are a 30 amp that is very large we have 20 amp protection on our gfi outlet box you should never blow this if you do you're doing something wrong probably or you're crossing wires and burning the system out. So it's very hard to fry these. These are quite useful and I've not had a whole lot of issues with these. Even the ones that I thought have broken, I've gotten to work again. So very, very trusty little brand. It's not very expensive. 60 to 100 bucks. It can be a lot to invest though, but like I said, it will pay for itself. And I know everything is super expensive right now, but simple investments like this are where it's at and well worth it, especially in a greenhouse set. So just very simply, it's very, very bright back here, but there's little four little holes that I drilled this through and I hooked up all of our wires here. You can see where all the wires go in. Positive, negative, coming right out. That airplane's going right overhead. <laughs> Jumping outside real quick here, we've got this solar panel. I just wanna point out that it's not too hard to build some type of setup. You can even just lean it on stuff. I have a solar panel laying on a large compost pile in the back of the greenhouse here. Just wanna show all around this little build here. It's pretty darn chilly, about 25 degrees outside. This is very simple. All we have to do is plug these little cords in, positive and negative, right in. And this is where we ran all of our electricity. So we've got all the mud here. It was nice and frosty. It's mostly froze up. I'm glad I got all of this dug and routed into the greenhouse before it froze up on me. I'll show this little system once more. All the lines running down. So we are going to take these right here. I've got my negative. The first thing you hook up on your actual solar controller is your battery. So you've got your battery 
and I am not going to leave it on this water obviously I and mean, this is not where it's staying it's actually going to go in the corner I'm gonna build some type of ledge for it and this little solar heating box all the sand is drying out and I had a little moisture in there so I had to crack it and now all the sands drifting down so we're gonna fill it back up with sand again trying to get all the moisture out of this solar heating box here so now that we've got the battery correctly hooked up positive to negative and that will be the first thing we hook up. This was a free battery I had picked up off of the marketplace and it was relatively new so I'm happy to acquire that for free. So just simply making these connections between the solar panel, the wires, and the sun here. We are showing we're putting 14.4 volts into that battery. The battery is good. It's not dead like I thought it was going to be. We will be able to use this. It's not a solar powered battery, which is specifically made for solar, which is lithium, but those do not charge in the cold. This is a cold crank battery and they work much better for in the greenhouse and stuff like that. So now that we've got power running in, the only thing left to do is run electricity to the actual output and whatever I want to power. So what we are going to be powering is this little pump right here on this system. So this is a dry pump. This just connects and we are building a closed loop system. I'm yet to put it together just because of lack of having power. So now that we've got electricity hookup and we've got solar power, 100 watts of solar power constantly coming in, we are going to be able to move some water through some of these solar boxes and get everything set up down on this end of the greenhouse. So this is just one more piece to the puzzle. I hope everybody enjoyed checking all this out. I really wanted to run through this as I was developing it. I'm doing a ton of work all over the greenhouse all the time. Everything's always moving. It's nice to be able to come out here in a t-shirt, I tell you what. So having that fire going, having our compost heater, geothermal, it was like 50 degrees by the time I got in here as the sun just broke over the horizon. And so all that stuff starts running in the morning and it just brings the temps right up So I really wanted to share this part of getting all this together running the solar power Just hooking it up and simply showing all the little pieces Before all of the other pieces come all the heating systems if anybody has any questions on anything I covered in here today I know there's a lot and I kind of ran through it haphazardly, but I really tried to cover everything to get that set up We've got decent power coming in so all of these systems and everything is constantly changing, constantly changing all over the greenhouse. So if there's any questions, you guys know where to drop them, and I will see you guys next time.